Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, September 10th. You're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. I'm Elizabeth. Um, good to see everybody here. Welcome back, Dawn, from your lovely vacation. We are all a little envious of that, not gonna lie. At least I was, I can't speak for everybody. But I definitely was. Um, yeah. <clears throat> if you wanna add your name here to the agenda, I can put some more slots in here. Oh, let's put them up here. There we go. Um, tell us what your favorite game is. I'm always looking for a, a new board game or a new game to play. I couldn't pick one, so oh. I picked a whole bunch. I love it. Good. Put as many. Oh, code names is really fun. I really like code names a lot. I play that with my kids sometimes. I'm gonna add that. See, I'm just piggybacking on you all all day long. Oh, that that's what I did. Gift added Scrabble, and I was like, oh, I like that game too, and so I had to add that. I yes, I am a fan of Scrabble as well. Um, and I also like Wordle, you know, I'm, I play Wordle. I play all the ga those New York Times games, Wordle and Connections and all that, too. So oh, I'll add that on here. I like that game. My daughter got me playing this game called Good Pizza, Great Pizza. And if you haven't heard of that, it's like the most wholesome game ever. It's really lovely. And all you do is make pizza for people. It's pretty nice. It's a good dopamine hit. It's very satisfying. I have two arcade games in my living room. I love it. Yes. That's awesome. Do you, you do play those too, don't you, Matt? Yeah, they both work and they're original. I keep Amazing. them going. I actually learned how to solder, which I don't really, I, I really don't know if I did it right, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, man. <laughs> you didn't make it worse. So that's good. No, I'm not, yeah, I have no idea what I did that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like magnifying glass and the thing so i'm like looking through it pretending like i know what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> i think my dad had one of those things that yeah but he never soldered anything in his life so i don't know why he had that but just in case just in case you know a soldering emergency comes up he was ready That's right ready for that um okay let's go ahead and jump in the super long <laughs> super long agenda we have um, Don, I, I know you're finalizing this and not really looking for feedback. Is that right? You're kind of putting on the finishing touches. So um, I am putting on the finishing touches. I got um, some really fabulous feedback. Thanks to uh, Callie, who pointed Emily Fox in my direction. And so she's a security expert at Red Hat and is amazing and provides great feedback. So I just got all of her stuff incorporated. So it is the plan is probably tomorrow to PR um, and to create the markdown file and PR it into the data science working group so that Elizabeth can get it up onto the website. Because I, um, I'm going to talk about it at OSS uh, Europe, which is the following week in Vienna. So I do need to get it out this week. However, um, I am still open to suggestions. So um, I'll put a flag at the top of it when I start converting it to Markdown to say no more suggestions. Um, but you can also always file an issue or submit a PR. And in particular, if any of you are security experts and have um, additional resources that would be good for people to use when working on the security of their um, project, that would be really helpful because I, I leaned heavily into the ones that I am familiar with, which is primarily um, want, uh, you know, resources under the open SSF under the Linux foundation and some CNCF resources, because those are the ones that, um, that I've used. So if other people have really good resources for, um, best practices for security for open source projects, that would be, that would be really helpful. And if I've already, like I said, if I've already closed out the document, um, just submit an issue or submit a PR after I get the document up, because we can we can continue to iterate on it. It doesn't, we don't, you know, they're never, they're never done, done, right? And that goes, that's true for any of the other practitioner guides as well, even though they're um, published, we can always, we can always add things to them. So don't hesitate to file issues or submit PRs to make improvements. We can always, we can always make them better. That's it. I'm good. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And yeah, as soon as it's ready, we'll push that out. Um, are you planning to do also a video? Probably not before OSSEU, but 
probably not before OSSEU because I don't think I'm going to have time, but I will, I will do a video around it as I, as I add that to my to-do list right now. Not to give you more work, but <laughs> <laughs> we did okay. add the links to the other videos in the other practitioner guides, right? We did that. I did. did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. They're in the, they're in the additional resources section. Um, and because, because Callie and I are giving a talk at OSSEU where part of what we talk about is the practitioner guides. I've already got some material for the security Perfect. security one. So I'll, I'll do that. Perfecto. Okay, any questions or comments for Dawn? Okay, let's move on. Uh, very glad to see it coming to publication. So, yeah. I do have a question, Don, and you may not know the answer to this. Is there one uh, that's coming along after this, or are we going to take a break from practitioner guides for a bit? Um, no, I think actually the next one I'm going to work on is um, diverse leadership for your project, uh, because mm -hmm. that's one that I think is also pretty, pretty important. So I'm basically, I'm picking the next one that I work on based on which ones I personally think are really important for projects to think about. Um, so that was, that was kind of the one that I, the one that I picked. So I assigned that one to myself, but there, there are others that people could pick up if there's some other stuff um, in the data science working group repository, there's a list of practitioner guides that could be worked on if somebody wants to work on one. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay, any other questions for Dawn? Nope, okay. Um, next one on our list is someone asked me about a job board or a job channel, I guess, on Slack. And I said, we should talk about it here. So just kind of curious what the community thinks about having a channel just for job postings, really. Uh, I think that would be all that would be in that channel. So it would be um, not too much conversation, I don't think, but um, just a lot of like postings or could be a lot of postings, I guess. What do we think about that? I feel like I see them time to time anyway, like in random, maybe. So, I mean, having a channel for jobs. Doesn't seem like it's not a good deal to me. I, mean, I think it would be, I think right. it would be good. Yeah, and I think we can just kind of open it up, and then if, if we're getting a bunch of weird stuff, then maybe we put some parameters around it because that that could happen. Um, you know, it's interesting. I'm in some um, some groups where there are very specific criteria, like the to do group job posting is it must be an OSPO job. Um, it can't be just a random open source job. Um, but I'm also part of the Turing Way Slack channel, and it's all kinds of stuff get posted in the, the job postings and there and sometimes it's really interesting stuff that you would never have never have you know thought about being a job um so it's yeah it's just kind of interesting you can go both ways see what happens go ahead matt i, I guess i'd be inclined for yeah what don had suggested just see, see how it goes i mean you know we do interact with so many different people in open source and so many different segments of open source, like not just OSPOs, of course. And so if we had OSPO jobs, great. If we had jobs around like scientific software that needed to hire <laughs> a person to help with their work, also awesome, not a problem there. So, and yeah, if it gets weird, we can <laughs> figure out what to do from there. Yeah, true, true, true. How do, do we think we should like make an announcement about it, like make a big deal about it, or just like let people find it organically. I think an announcement. Oh, sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Yeah. I was gonna say I think an announcement is appropriate just so people know it exists, but you don't have to make a big deal out of it. Just so I think it sounds like it was happening anyway. So this just gives people more structure of where to put something like that. Yeah, at least okay. a post in general so people can find it. Oh, sorry, Sophia. Keep talking. It's of course it will be also good for people to be aware of it and then know what kind of job I expected, not like someone passing on the road job and then post there. So 
people should know what is expected so they don't just go posting things and then make it weird. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so we'll create a channel. Maybe we'll do a posting on LinkedIn and then and in, in the general channel as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, good idea. Awesome. Any other comments or any concerns about it? Okay, we'll see how it goes. We do love to experiment <laughs> with things here at Chaos, so that's good. Awesome. All right, next on the list, it says OSS Europe. That was me, and it was Don, you just mentioning that you're going to be there. So um, do you know that Georg is going to do like a unconference session with the UN and the SDG stuff? Can you Are you going to be able to join that, do you think? It would be great if you were there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try. It'll depend on when he schedules the unconference session, but I think Georg and Ruth will definitely be there. I know David, you're not going to be there despite, um, working on, working on this. So I think we'll, hopefully we can bring back some, some notes and things, um, okay. for, for other people. Okay. But yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to attend it and I would encourage anybody else is going to be there to, to attend it as well. But it's one of those things like the unconference sessions get scheduled when they get scheduled and, um, hopefully I can attend. Okay. That was it. Same for me as well. I'll be there. And I told Georg, I'm happy to help. I just oh. don't know when it's happening. So, okay. I have um, other talks and if there's a conflict. So then that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. That, that was really it. That just crossed my mind. And along those lines, I know we have a large group of chaotics that are going to be giving talks at that conference and um the chaos linkedin will probably just bullet them out and just let people know that hey if you want to meet any of these people or hear any of these talks here you go um, and then we ha also have that calendar too which i need to find the link to but um yeah we have a calendar of of, of upcoming talks that people are giving as well and it's a little bit hidden so we need to maybe surface that a little bit better as well so i'll just make a note here um we will uh, promote the chaotic talks okay anything else on ossu no not for me anyway okay um next one on the list oops anything else to add to this Salve, you want to talk about this? Yeah, sure. Um, so I got some feedback from some of you guys uh, that it was uh, not super convenient that um, the sustainable open source sustainability working group uh, that the Cyclone DX folks are working on to introduce uh, sustainability information into that SBOM standard. The working group meets on uh, has met exactly on the same same time as um, the OSPO working group, which was kind of annoying, apparently. So from next meeting, starting uh, next week, Thursday, will uh, this, uh, the working group, uh, the OSS sustainability working group, will start one hour later. So anybody who wants to attend both uh, now can. So and you're all welcome, as usual. And... I know I sent some messages to some of you guys, uh, giving you a bunch of, um, well, a rather large reading list and stuff for that. Uh, don't worry much about that. Uh, the, the, we're in a situation now where it's good to come with good ideas and good scenarios and good needs and uh, uh, project statuses that we'll, we can imagine. And then we'll filter and make it all compliant uh, later. So you're quite welcome. And uh, if you guys have the link, I think it's further down in the, the, the weekly meetings notes, uh, there is a link to this um, web page, uh, our notes for the sustainability use cases. That's the one. 
Um, there's all in on that page now. There is also a link uh, um, at the top to video recordings. So if you missed the pr previous two meetings, um, you can uh, actually see them on YouTube. Uh, it's the meeting recordings link at the bottom of the, uh, on the, in the box. So that's what I wanted to say. Uh, and it's uh, certainly not too late to join the, the party. Thank you for doing that. Definitely, thank you. Sorry, I was focused on copying and pasting. That was pretty yeah. hard. Um, took uh, everything. I can go to both. And I'm really interested in how this conversation goes. Anybody else have questions or comments about this project? Yeah, super interesting. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. So I'll be very kind of you all to do that, to accommodate. Um, okay, well, I think we can probably move on then. Um, Matt, did you put this on here? Okay. You want to talk about this? Just, yeah, so I had been seeing, so for those of you that don't know, we're updating the metrics to a new template. And so basically what I was going to thinking is I've, I've been seeing a number of PRs come across that are like requesting review for an updated, um, for the updated template. And I, could we drop those PR, like create a column that's between E and F here? Because sometimes I get, like, I just don't have time to take a look at the PRs, but I just want to have somewhere where we can track because there may be an extensive set of PRs. I don't know what other people think. Just because they're all over the place too. Do you mean that you want a link to the PR or? Yeah, so yeah. like, yeah, so like Yiga will make a change to the metric and then create a PR. And be because our metrics are in so many different repositories right now, like I, you can't just look at one repo and see the PRs that need to be addressed. And so just creating the PR and then just putting it here so we can kind of track what needs to be taken a look at. Okay, I think that's okay. Would that be okay? Perfect. Yeah, I think that's okay. We had uh, we had discussed maybe taking all of those metrics and moving them into one repo. Would it help if we made that the first action item in this process? Well, or is that something we still want to hold off on and discuss a little bit more? I might want to move that second because, like Peculiar and Yiga, I think what they're doing right now is the template stuff, which is what we had discussed on. Um, like for using some of the chaos funds to do and this I don't want to just this wasn't that wasn't a part that we had talked about in the original kind of agreement. So maybe do that second like do the template stuff first and then the rearrangement second. Yeah, agreed. I think that there are so many moving parts to that, to the moving of the metrics in one place with the links to the images, like all of that stuff has to change. The links on the website all have to change. So yeah, I think that's a, a separate project. Agreed. Just my two cents. And I think a lot of people know my position on moving stuff around is that I, I, I don't really like it because we break links because people link directly to the stuff on GitHub. Uh, whether we want them to or not. Um, and so I, I always hate to do too much rearranging and moving stuff around unless, unless we, you know, if we really need to, um, that's, that's fine. But I don't know. I think we should move this stuff into the template and keep talking about whether we want to move stuff into a single repository. Yeah, I kind of like having them all in one place. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of moving moving bits to that. So agreed. Okay, well, thank you and thank you. you. Oh, go ahead, Matt. I was just gonna say that will help me a lot because then, like, when I have a block of time, I can just go through the PRs kind of off of that spreadsheet as opposed to 
trying to track them down in the repos. Have there any been merged yet? I just want to check and make sure that that's working on the website. I haven't merged anything, but I've seen a couple that like are requesting a review. Okay. I teach on Mondays, so like they showed up yesterday morning. And I just didn't have a chance to take a look at anything. Okay. When you merge that in, um, let me know, Matt, so I can just check and make sure that the like hidden thing on the website is working okay and that everything looks good. Uh, you get, had her hand up. Oh, hi everyone. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to ask, uh, would you like me to send, like request a review, Elizabeth or any other person? I mean, in addition to adding it on the spreadsheet, so I could do that as well. Um, honestly, at that point, if it's just added to the spreadsheet, that would probably be enough that you don't have to tag okay. reviews because then okay. put it in one spot. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, anything else with the metrics updates? Okay. Uh, well, this is good timing. So, um, I'm assuming that the chaos con planning committee wants to take a minute. Is that fair? Yes, I see a couple nods. Okay, so for those who don't know, um, while we're planning chaos cons, we take half this meeting and uh, um, a lot it for that planning, so we don't have to have another meeting on our calendars. <laughs> so we cut this meeting short um, at the the half of the hour. So um, that's now. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. So, and we were done with our agenda anyway. So, unless there's any final, we have two minutes. Unless there's any final thoughts or comments to be made, I have a comment end. that's not helpful. <laughs> you have a comment that's not helpful. Awesome. Keep it to yourself. Oh, I, just it. I just I'm thinking about sort of the evolution of our content across all of our different platforms, and sort of we've gotten ourselves in a bit of a hairy mess where there's sort of like like preserving precedent and prior links, but also creating a change management system that doesn't cause Matt undue burden because now he has to check three different things instead of one. Um, and in my head, I'm thinking this is, is this the like, how much of this is because we're using three different platforms and how much of this is because we're trying to use a Git versioning system on, on like a different kind of content that does like need is treated differently in the way that it's replicated and it just made me think of I'm wondering if anyone is doing research on sort of these different types of workflow models as collaboration tools and which ones are more or less effective in different types of content structures again not helpful it just like feels like we're like this wonderful use case of now that we're kind of like have have a, an incredible amount of content over a number of years and we're trying to evolve how we maintain it, we are entering into more complex use cases every time as our systems become more complex. And again, some of it is our own making of how we chose what to use at first, but also how much of it is because of other factors. Sorry, this is where my brain goes. No, and that's fair. Cause like um, the spreadsheet that Elizabeth was showing, like that's, you know, that's really old. That was like one of the first things we made and like i'm trying to hold on to it <laughs> as time goes on um I, like are there, would there that. yeah I mean, would, <laughs> it's hard to do anything differently i don't know but like even for the, like say the links to the pr like so the challenge i think you kind of get is that we have these metrics in let's just say like a half a dozen different repositories and like tracking the PRs across those can be a little bit thorny sometimes. Um, so is, is there a way to use GitHub to kind of centralize that PR tracking? Because if there is, I'm happy to do that. So I just went to the like the lowest solution for me that I thought would work. But if there's a better one, that's cool too. So it's funny you say that because if you're familiar with Brian Grant, former Googler, longtime Kubernetes contributor, just wrote this whole blog post on the mono repo versus modularization of Git and sort of the challenge that breeds and having to 
manage technical changes across multiple different pockets because all these different repos have to be merged together in one build that is the Kubernetes binary. Um, and essentially that they created their own tool, Prow, to help manage this. Um, because they were doing it at such a complex and large scale. Um, but that is what they've done, is, is they, they created another tool to help them track movement and PRs and approvals and builds across multiple different repositories, because the current structure of GitHub does not really facilitate that easily, unless you have an enterprise account, but still then I still I don't think it would meet your needs. And now that you bring that up, if I recall, this was a conversation we had a long time ago about moving to GitLab, because I think GitLab is actually better at doing that because the folks at um, with Grimoire Lab were running into the same issue that they would have these PRs and issues spread across repos as it's constructed in the chaos org. And so it was hard to track those and trying to think of a central way to do that. And I feel like the conversation was that GitLab provided a better solution. I don't know if that's true. Um, but that's interesting. Well, we've created our own system too. It's the spreadsheet, <laughs> which tracks the <laughs> tracks everything. Don, did you have a comment? Um, no, I changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> well, yes, and then we also do. Google Docs to do collaboration. We do GitHub to host the content, some of the content on the word, and then WordPress to, yeah. So we do have, you're right, Sophia, like 47 platforms that are all trying to, we're trying to integrate with each other. And yeah, it seems like there might be a, a better way, but. We just need to disband as a community for like six months. <laughs> just everything. start over. Start over. <laughs> But it's also there's something beautiful about choosing the platform that best need like the needs of the collaboration in moment. So like the fact that it's easier to write these things in Word docs, it's easier to manage changes and get and it's like I, I feel like there is value for each individual one. So we feel like we've just like, but then then you have the spreadsheet problem. Yeah, I mean, they all did have a reason why we went with them and mm -hmm. the spreadsheet has has served its purpose thus far. I mean, it's maybe a little rudimentary, but it works, right? Like you can, at least it's all in one place. I didn't mean to derail. We can we can move to chaos con planning now. Okay. No, that was a, that was a really good point, Sophia. And it's certainly something to think about, um, especially too, as, as other platforms develop and changes are made, maybe you can relook at that. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. So if you are on ChaosCon planning, stick around. If you're not, we'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.